In the last video, we explored various methods of selecting geometry for our contouring toolpaths. Now in this video, we're going to discuss roughing and finish passes. If you plan on following along, you can use your part file from the last video or open and save part 7.5. Let's begin by looking at the point where the tool enters and exits the contour. To do so, we're going to right click Contour 1 and select Edit. The entry point is defined on the last tab, the Linking tab, so select it. At the bottom, select Entry Position. We can now select an edge that we want the tool to enter on. When selecting an edge, the tool is going to start at the center of that edge, whether it be a straight line or an arc. We're going to select the front edge of our part. Now the other thing that happens at the entry and exit point is a lead in and lead out. Typically, we like to lead into the contour with an arc and lead out of the contour with an arc. If you plunge or retract your tool along a finished machine wall, you're going to leave a slight gouge. So by arcing into the contour, we're not going to leave that gouge where the tool plunges and retracts. The defaults have lead in and lead out active. Here we can see we've defined the radius that we're leading in as well as the distance. The last thing we want to look at in regards to the start and stop point of the contour is how much of an overlap there is. That's controlled on the Passes tab. On the Passes tab, just below the Finish Passes checkbox, we have Finishing Overlap. If you don't overlap the contour, it's possible to be left with a slight scallop where the contour starts and stops. So you'll see when we generate the toolpath, the start and stop point of our contour is overlapped by a quarter of an inch. So with that said, let's select OK to generate the contour. Now we're arcing in at the center of this edge, and when we come around the back side of the contour, we're overlapping the start point before arcing off the contour and retracting the tool. So we've improved the surface finish in that way. But most often when you're contouring a part, it's a good idea to take a roughing pass to remove the material and then a light finish pass to ensure that there was no tool deflection during that roughing pass. To establish a finish pass, again we're going to right click the contour and select Edit. Finish Passes are set on the Passes tab. We need to check the Multiple Finish Passes checkbox. Let's set the number of Finish Passes to 2. Now our first pass is going to be 50 thousandths of an inch off of the contour and our second pass will be along the finished geometry of our contour. So that establishes roughing for the contour. What if the contour was too tall and it couldn't be machined in one single depth cut. Well again, on the Passes tab, we can check Multiple Depths. This works the same way Multiple Depths work on a facing tool path. By defining a maximum step down, HSM Works will calculate how many steps are required to machine the entire contour. Let's set a maximum step down of one quarter of an inch, or decimal two five. So we're going to take multiple steps to remove the material in the Z direction. But by default, with each step, we're going to run a roughing pass and a finish pass. By doing this, you could see lines along your finished part where each finish pass was taken. To avoid this, it's a good idea to turn finish at final depth only on. What this does is force the tool to take multiple Z cuts, all 50 thousandths of an inch, off of the contour, and then at the final depth only, we're going to finish the entire contour. So with our roughing passes and finishing passes set, we're going to select OK. Now we can see we've taken two roughing passes, both offset off of the contour by 50 thousandths of an inch, then our final finish pass 
is only machined when it's machining the entire depth of the contour. Now before we finish looking at roughing options, I'd like to show you a little trick you can use for contouring toolpaths. And that has to do with this top flat face. If we were to contour this edge with a half inch cutter, the entire edge would not be machined because the edge is larger than the diameter of the cutter. What we're going to do is select 2D milling and start a new 2D contour. Using the 2D contour toolpath with multiple roughing passes, we can effectively machine the entire face. So on the geometry tab, select the edge of the contour on the right hand side. Remember we want to select the contour at the depth where we're going to machine so that we don't need to establish our heights. Because I had propagate Z on, we propagated all the way around at that given Z depth. Go ahead and unselect propagate along Z so that just that contour is selected. And we want to ensure that our arrow is on the correct side of the contour. With the geometry set, we can skip the heights tab because that's defined by the depth where we selected the contour and move on to the passes tab. On the passes tab, check roughing passes. These roughing passes are similar to the step over on a facing operation. The only difference is we need to define how many we're going to take, as well as how much we want to step over. I'm going to use a step over of one quarter of an inch, or 0.25, and take a total of three passes. Whenever roughing passes is turned on, we're automatically going to take one finished pass, in this case, 50 thousandths of an inch. Now the other thing we're going to do with this contour is cheat the lead in and lead out a little bit so that we extend beyond the part and machine onto the part. To do this, go to the linking tab and change the angle from 90 degrees to zero. We're also going to set the length of the lead in to one quarter of an inch. So with our multiple passes set and the lead in extended out along the contour, Let's select OK. Now our contour is extending beyond the edge of the part to ensure that we're machining onto the part and we're taking multiple passes to ensure that that entire top face is machined. Well with that I hope you now fully understand the contouring process, how we can select geometry, and methods of setting up roughing and finish passes to get the result you want on your parts. It's time to move on to pocketing.